From Washington, this is VOA News. I'm Marty Johnson reporting. The war of words between Russia and Turkey continues. The subject, the downing of a Russian warplane earlier this week with Turkish Prime Minister Recep Tayyip Erdogan warning Moscow not to play with fire. Speaking from Beybert, Erdogan accused Russia of playing with fire by attacking groups opposed to Syrian President Bashar al-Assad under the pretext of fighting ISIS and by irresponsibly targeting trucks operating inside Syria for commercial or humanitarian activities. Turkey's state-run news agency and a Turkish relief group reported Wednesday that Russian aircraft attacked a Turkish aid convoy inside Syria near the Turkish border, killing seven people and wounding ten. Turkey reacted angrily after Turkish fighter jets shot down the warplane Thursday, Tuesday rather, threatening ties between the two countries on opposite sides in the Syrian war and raising fears of a wider international conflict. Meantime, the detention of two prominent journalists in Turkey is provoking national and international criticism. Dorian Jones reports from Istanbul. Condemnation is growing over the jailing of two leading Turkish journalists. Kemal Kılıçdaroğlu, the leader of the main opposition, Republican People's Party, described the arrest as a black day for democracy and freedom of press. The U.S. Embassy in a tweet expressed great concern about what it said appears to be another media outlet under pressure. The editor of Turkey's Jumhuriyet newspaper, Jan Dundar, and his Ankara bureau chief, Erdem Gül, are facing more than 20 years in jail on spying charges. Dundar, speaking before his trial on Thursday, expressed defiance. He said he and Gül are journalists, not traitors or spies. Dorian Jones, VOA News, Istanbul. Also today, Russia announced no more travel between the two countries without visas. This is VOA News. French President Francois Hollande, presiding over today's National Memorial Service for Victims, promised to crush the army of fanatics who carried out this month's deadly attacks in Paris. The commemoration held at a monument in Paris began with a somber reading of the names and ages of the 130 people who died in the attacks claimed by the Islamic State group. Nick Alexander, 35 ans. It has now been two weeks since Islamic State militants swept through Paris, setting off suicide vests and opening fire on innocent victims in several locations. The ceremony was attended by top French leaders and families of victims, as well as some of the hundreds injured in France's worst-ever terrorist attack. German police said today they have released two men arrested a few days ago on suspicion of planning a serious attack against the state. Police told local media no evidence was found to hold the men who were detained on the outskirts of Berlin following a raid on an Islamic cultural center. Authorities cleared the area surrounding the men's vehicle after the raid and said that the vehicle was supposed to contain a suspicious object, but that object turned out to be harmless, with no weapons or explosives found. Authorities in Mali have arrested two men in connection with the terrorist attack that killed 22 people at an upscale Bamako hotel. Katharina Ho has the latest review away from Bamako. Amadou Sango of the Ministry for Security and Civil Protection says a cell phone found Thursday at the hotel led to arrest of two Malian men. C'est que les enquêtes avancent normalement et des objets ont été He says this new piece of evidence this item we hope it will bring the investigation forward. He said the two suspects were picked up by Malian special forces in Bamako. Gunmen entered the Reds and Blue Hotel the morning of November 20, firing indiscriminately at guests and staff. Survivors says they then headed for the two uppermost floors, specifically looking for foreigners. Authorities still have not identified the bodies of the two gunmen killed during the siege. Katrina Hay for VOA News, Bamako. 
And police in Colorado Springs, Colorado, have been exchanging gunfire with the shooter inside the city's branch of the Planned Parenthood organization. Police confirmed four officers wounded several civilians. They say the area is not secure. They also warned the media to stay back from what they called an active shooter scene. Planned Parenthood is controversial and sometimes comes under attacks in the United States, which are illegal because some of its branches perform abortions, although the bulk of its work is to provide women's health care and screenings. And Chicago police say they've made an arrest in the shooting death of a 9-year-old boy. They've picked up 27-year-old Corey Morgan, charged with first-degree murder in the death of Tyshawn Lee. I'm Marty Johnson in Washington. That's the latest world news from VOA.